audiobooks is a lot of books. Hey guys, it's Jay, and today I'm here with part two of my June 2018 wrap-up. I read a total of 28 books this month, which is crazy. I decided to split my wrap-up into four separate parts, so this is technically part three because the first seven books that I read are my Cramathon wrap-up. So if you want to check that out, then it'll be linked up above and down below. And then part one I uploaded recently, so y'all can check that out for the next seven books. So the first 14 books already have been wrapped up, so these are the next seven after those. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I'm going to talk about in this wrap-up is Blood Sisters, and this is by Jane Corey. I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It was one of my 5-star prediction books, and it almost made it. It was super close, but... Not quite. The book opens with three young girls heading off to school one day and then 20 minutes later one of them is dead. 15 years later and desperate for money, Allison accepts a job as an art teacher at the local prison. Kitty is living in a group home with no memory of the accident that happened 15 years prior. As she begins her new job at the prison, Allison begins to feel that she is in danger and being watched and that somebody might actually want revenge. The reason I ended up only giving it 4.5 instead of 5 is because I did feel that the beginning was very slow although it was definitely necessary to give the backstory of our two main characters. I think that the way the story was told was really well done. It was basically alternating perspectives between Kitty and Allison but the way that their stories like interwove and eventually gave the big picture was really really well done. There was also two different timelines going on between Kitty and Allison. There was like flashbacks from before the accident and then present time as well which again was a great addition to the story. I was definitely invested in the story right from the beginning even though as I said it was kind of slow. I just needed to know what actually happened and the truth behind everything. There's definitely some trigger warnings that should be addressed especially for cutting and rape so if you guys are sensitive to that maybe don't pick the book up. The main reason I'm not giving it five out of five stars is because I found it very predictable and a little bit too coincidental at times. There were a couple of plot twists that I had no idea were coming but a lot of them I were able to call right from the very beginning so that was kind of sucky for me but I will definitely definitely be checking out more work from this author if they ever put out more because I was definitely a fan. So the next book I read was a graphic novel. It's called Life Formed, Cleo Makes Contact. It's by Matt Mayer Lowry and Casey Anderson and I ended up giving it a 2 out of 5 stars. It follows Cleo who is an 11 year old girl and her single father. They live together and then one day an alien invasion comes to earth and ends up killing her father and upon seeing this an alien shapeshifts into her father obtaining some of his memories along the way and then with the help of her new father he needs to protect the earth from the aliens so but honestly the storyline just didn't have anything going on half the time I was just like what's happening like the relationship between Cleo and her father was probably the best part of the story I was super bummed out when he was killed and then after that, I just didn't care about any of the characters because the relationship between the new dad and Cleo just wasn't anywhere close to the emotional depth I wanted. I personally think that the storyline was way too rushed. It was kind of confusing about what was going on. Half of the pages didn't even have any dialogue and it was just pictures. So I mean I was able to read it in 30 minutes but I didn't connect with any of the characters. I didn't care about what happened to them. It was just kind of like a quick read I could do while I waited for my movie to start basically. So two out of five stars. I didn't really like it but that might just be me. 
The next book I have is Side Effects May Vary and this is by Julie Murphy. I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars. The book follows 16 year old Alice who is diagnosed with leukemia and so she decides that she is going to complete a list of things before she dies. Not thinking of any of the consequences that may come from her actions, she enlists the help of her friend Henry in order to complete this list. Upon completing the list, Alice is ready to let go and then she is given the news that she's actually in remission and now she needs to deal with all the consequences that come from this list. Although I think that the writing style was intriguing, I liked the dual perspective and the then now timeline between Henry and Alice, but the two main characters drove me so insane that it definitely brought the enjoyment of the story down for me. Alice was extremely whiny and annoying and selfish and I just wanted to punch her in the face half the time. And then Henry just pissed me off because he let Alice walk all over him. He did not stand up for himself at all and it just got very annoying very quickly and I think that he deserved better so I did like that there was a lot of character development in the end but just the overall having to deal with reading about those two pissed me off so I just could not. The next book I have is The Diary of a Haunting and this is by M. Verino. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. It follows Paige and her family who moved to Idaho after living in LA. They move into this huge giant old house. Upon arriving at this new house strange things begin to occur. Things are disappearing. Her younger brother Logan is acting very weird. Paige discovers that a cult used to perform rituals in this house and that might be the explanation for the paranormal experiences that she is having. So before purchasing this book I was drawn to the creepy cover. It has creepy pictures throughout the story so I was very intrigued. I was initially intrigued because it was said to be based off of true events that actually occurred. If you know me your girl is super into like creepy shit so I was very excited for this but it was just a not good. I just definitely wanted more from this. The ending was very predictable. It was obvious what was gonna happen. I didn't find it scary at all. I was bored through most of it. I just didn't care about anything that happened to the characters. It was like oh you're gonna die? Cool whatever guess you're dead now. It just definitely wasn't what I wanted out of it so that's why I'm only giving it a three out of five stars but I did like the creepy pictures. The next book I have is First Comes Love by Emily Giffen and I gave this a four out of five stars. The book follows Josie and Meredith Garden who are polar opposites and then a tragic accident in their family throws them even farther apart. 15 years later Josie is now a kindergarten teacher and she loves her job but then her ex-boyfriend's daughter ends up being enrolled in her class and she begins to think that she might want to start a family of her own. Meredith seems to be living the perfect life. She has a loving husband, a four-year-old daughter that she adores, and a very high-paying job, but she is very unhappy with the life that she chose for herself. As the anniversary of the accident begins to come closer, both sisters need to look at their lives and make some tough decisions that may change them forever. I really liked the dynamics of this book. It's told in alternating perspectives between the two sisters, which I think strengthened the story a lot. It was really interesting to see how the same situation could be interpreted so differently between the two sisters. I think that the two sisters were very hard to like. They were both very unlikable. Meredith was really annoying and just so negative with everything. Josie was just super whiny but both characters developed a lot during the story so that was nice to see. The dialogue between the characters was really well. I found myself giggling at the banter between Josie and Gabe and Pete. I thought they were so funny together. I also really liked the relationship between Josie and Gabe. It showed a true platonic relationship which I barely see in books between a female and a male so that was really awesome. I also loved how it was not heavily heavily romance based which I assumed it was based off of the title but it is about 
so much more. It's about like forgiveness and grief and just family dynamics and it's just so much more than romance which I appreciated so much. Overall like it was cute and fluffy but also dove into harder topics which I liked and I definitely recommend it. The next book I have is Call Me By My Name by John Ed Bradley and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. In a small town in Louisiana, Tater Henry befriends Rodney Boulay in the summer of 1965. Aware of the racial divide of the community, Tater Henry is taunted and thrown out of the white community. Years later, Tater and Rodney's path cross again and they quickly become inseparable on and off the football field. Rodney's twin sister Angie quickly accepts Tater unconditionally and their feelings for each other begin to grow stronger but their father has other plans. As time progresses and the town begins to try to desegregate, Rodney needs to look inside himself to figure out what it is he actually believes. This is such a good story especially to help teach people about the history of our world. It's honestly kind of like mind-blowing while I was reading this that people actually treated other people this way. The way that sport is interwoven into such a bigger topic was so well done. The story felt very educational but it wasn't done in a way that was preachy and shoved down your throat. I loved the characters so much in this, especially Tater. He was such a sweetheart no matter what prejudice was thrown his way, he was just so respectful of everybody and just you could tell how much he cared about people in general. I also really loved the friendship between Rodney and Tater. Even when Rodney was being a complete asshole and just trying to deal with his racism, you could tell that he did care a lot for Tater, but it was just so drilled in his head the way that his father was, that it was hard for him to accept him. But the character development, though, was so well done. I definitely did not see the ending coming. I uh, was not happy with it. I'm still bitter about it, but it definitely tied the whole story together and I get why it had to happen, but still bitter, though. Still bitter. And then the final book for this wrap-up is A Totally Awkward Love Story by Tom Ellen and Lucy Evision, and I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It follows Hannah and Sam who meet accidentally one day in a bathroom at a party. They strike up a conversation but are quickly interrupted before they even tell each other's names. As time goes on, they can't stop thinking of each other. They don't think that they will ever see each other again until they do repeatedly and it's super awkward. I loved every second of it. It's super cute and fluffy and exactly what I needed at the time I read it. It was very fast paced and I was giggling throughout a lot of the story and the awkward situations that the characters found themselves in. I really liked the alternating perspectives between Sam and Hannah. It's like the last two books I talked about where you got a different glimpse into each character's minds about the same situation and how differently they interpreted it. I didn't like Hannah for the most part because I found her very annoying and she let her best friend Stella walk all over her. She never stood up for herself and Stella was just a total bitch in my opinion. Sam also pissed me off at times because he was just so naive about everything and there's no way that a 17 year old boy is that naive about literally everything. I did really like when they got together though. They were super cute and the banter between them was adorable. I think that the characters acted more like 16 year olds rather than the 18 year olds they were supposed to be. I think that a lot of the drama and problems that they faced would have been completely avoided if they had just, you know, talked to each other. Communication is key, children. My favorite character was 100% Robin, Sam's best friend. I thought he was hilarious and every single scene he was in I was giggling nonstop. I thought that the book did such a great job in talking about sex and losing your virginity and it didn't romanticize it at all. I didn't find it to be like how all the other books are like, oh it's the most beautiful thing in the whole world. Like bitch no, that's not how it works. It's awkward and it's weird. And it did such a good job portraying that to teenagers and I think that that's going to be one of the highlights of this book when teenagers read it. I also liked how the authors portrayed the toxic relationship between Stella and Hannah. I think that it did a really great job in portraying how dangerous these relationships can be and how 
sometimes you do just need to get out of them. Alright guys, so that was the next seven books. So I've wrapped up a total of 21 books for this month. The Cramathon wrap-up and part one of the wrap-up will be down below. If y'all want to check those 14 books out, let me know down below if you've read any of these, what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye! Yeah.